Good morning. Today we're going to be working on a 1979 Super Glide shovel head. I've been working on this bike for quite some time. We got it running good. I go for a test ride and I noticed the clutch is giving me problems. This is the second time I went in there, cleaned the clutch up, it would work fine. Then after a month or two, it would start to, how would I describe it? It would be catching. It would be grabbing. I'd be, I'd, I'd be in gear with my clutch handle pulled in and it would want to creep. So I tried the adjustments. I went into it last week. I cleaned the plates. I cleaned the steels. I put it all back together and, and it was working proper. But I noticed on the steel that it appears there's a lot of etching going on and the fibers and the steel stick. So what I did was I ordered up steels and friction plates from Drag Specialty. That was reasonable. They had the kit. That was like $140. I bought it separately and it cost me like $90. Drag Specialty to source your parts. Now, if you noticed, I got it up in the air with my Laren Jack. Great tool for the garage. You move it around, you do whatever you want. Works on most bikes. All right, we're gonna get to the other side, start removing the derby cover, primary cover. First thing I'm gonna do is remove this inspection cover. You'll notice I put a little dash there. That's just so when I put it back together, in case this was warped, it will be set up the right way. I got my little pick. I use the black ultra pretty strong stuff as you see but she still you can see it leaked a little oil I got new gaskets with a black marker I'm going to index where I start with these bolts and that will be right here I like to just crisscross as best as possible. Now with a 3 16th with my gun with this little swivel on the end, it's nice because some of this stuff doesn't really like access it easily. Okay. One, I put that to the side. Careful, it's gonna be oil. Pretty clean. Like I said, I had to support. So the only one that was a different size was our number one. Okay, with a 916th deep, I want to remove this adjustment. There we go. We're gonna remove this. This is the lock set for your clutch adjustment at the hub. Let's remove it. See where. This was a round washer. I grounded where the white is, and that's where these studs are, so they don't interfere. You'll see, you just slide it on. Okay, and what we want to do is compress these springs. This will make it easier for you. When you remove these nuts, this will come all off in one piece, and you don't got to bother with these 10 springs. Now, what you're going to do is tighten it until you see this gets loose. Now, you know that's good enough. You see it shaking? You're in good shape. Now, we're going to remove the clutch nuts. Like I said, drain your oil. This was done a week ago. Okay, that's one. You're gonna see on these, there's an index. And what that does is when you're adjusting this, you'll see a notch right on your plate. I'll show you in a minute. Let me remove these. This one's meant for oil. You can see a chain. You see a lot of them will have a belt. This is a 1979. Now you see that wash is holding those springs in place so you don't gotta go crazy. 
there it is. Now, if you could see, a little notch, a little notch, a little notch. If you look close, you could see it. And what that does, these nuts have an indentation in them. So when they come around, they'll click and the spring will set it up and these will not move. All right, let's put that aside. Now let's go look at these plates. I clean these, and like I said, then it started working. So I know I'm not gonna do this again, so I bought new plates and steels. Put this one aside, just as I took it off. Now here's a steel. There's a plate. You can see how they look ugly. Just take your time with it. There's another steel. I see the way it's sliding easily. When I took these apart the other day, the steels were sticking to the friction. So I'm gonna spray it with a little brake cleaner. I've went through this and I'm going through it again. What I'm gonna do is clean it as best as possible. Let's make sure all these, the plates and the steels got a ride on this stuff. Make sure there's no Burrows or anything that would cause it from not sliding. They feel pretty damn. They feel pretty good. I could see signs of rust here and there, but let's try our best. Clean it up. This bike was set up with an oil injection. They closed all it off. There's a port here and one up here. So what I'm going to do is put it together and run three ounces of oil, and that will act like a lubricant for the chain. This is it, drag specialty. These are the friction plates. They look like that. Here's the new steels. So we're gonna put it back together the way it came apart. Okay, we know our last piece was this friction. All right, let's throw a friction in there. These are lighter, those things are steel. All right, let's see, hopefully everything works. That slid in nice. Now for a steel. All right, I see this line on it. I'm gonna keep them all out. All right, there we go, nice. Now for a friction. The way it came out of the box is the way I'm putting them on. Try to clean your hands. Well, that slid on nice. All right, just don't have a mark on it. Oh yes, it does right there, so. 
I don't think it makes a difference, but on the side of caution, I'm staggering it. You can see the way these are sliding on, nice and easy. Hopefully that's a good sign of things to come. There's that mark again. Go for the long one first and then teeter it. Steal. Okay, a last friction. Looks beautiful. Here's our pressure plate. You can see how the age, it's pitted. You can only go on one way, as you just seen. Beautiful thing. Now remember, notch in. I'm just hand tightening them. Okay. Now I'm going to remove the washer. This will put the pressure back on the pressure plate. It's that simple. Now you've seen before, we put this on, we removed that, pressure plate came off. We put that back on. And that was that. Now for an adjustment at the hub. I'm gonna put this 9 16 back on. And this locks it up so you keep your adjustment with the pin correct. Put a screwdriver, let's see what we got. I'm gonna turn this in until it stops. You'll feel it. Okay, now you see it's snugged up. Okay. Start off with a quarter to a half turn. I like a quarter. You can always change it later on. I find a quarter on this bike works well. And you don't gotta get crazy. All right, with that, now we're gonna do an adjustment. All right, I got myself a ruler. They say an inch and a 30 second. That's one inch. That's an inch and a 30 second. You have to take the measurement from the inside of here to the plate. So I'm just using it. That's an inch and a 30 second. It's an inch and a 30 second. Now I see where that is. Let's bring this up here. And it's the same thing. With that, you see I just used a, a Lufkin's ruler. You can use whatever. Now, if this slips, you can adjust this and make it an inch. Let's double check this adjustment now. I should have waited until I adjusted it properly, but no big deal. Okay, let's see what we got. Quarter, that's right where it was.
Now I'm gonna check the handle up top. Now I can make a final adjustment right here. Let me show you. Here's our clutch cable. I like to see a nickel's worth at the handle. So that would be this gap right here. This is what goes to your arm. I pull it out, you can see. Now if you have to adjust it, just turn this half inch. I go check the handle. I hit it like five times. Everything appears to be working. I like that. For a start, that's good. Let me put this back together and then we can see what we got. Just remember you got this. That goes on to your starter. Put that so that don't get lost. As you see, we pretty much clean this up. I got a gasket kit. Let's see what that looks like. All right, I got it on the floor. I took the gasket out of the box and everything lines up. What I'm gonna do now is take this Elbrock gasket cinch and get this gasket to stick to my primary. I hate oil leaks, so take your time. All you need is a little skim coat of this stuff. Now let's do it to the primary. Stuff goes on pretty easy. I'm gonna stick this to here. Yeah, when I got this bike, it was a, it leaked oil from everywhere. I'm gonna start with this second one. That should make it fairly easy for us. All right, here goes. Let's see what I did. Get your starter. Hang it in there. Remember, we started right here and start them. Beautiful. That was the only Allen head hardware that was a different size. Everything else, same size. See, I'm just bringing it to wrist tight. All right, now I'm gonna tighten them. And nothing crazy, guys. I'm crazy because you'll strip this stuff. Now we'll check each one. A little time. 
Good old time. That one's starting to strut. Good old time. Good old time. So this was an oil injected primary. What that meant to my understanding is that through the oil pump there was a little squirter and it would just squirt a mist of oil into this casing. Then there was a vacuum line coming out that would suck that atmosphere out and that was a recycling event. This one is closed off. So an old timer told me put three ounces of your primary oil. I got three ounces of the gear oil. It's 2050. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. I cleaned it up. I used brake cleaner. This always gave me problems. I have used ultra black, it just gets leaks. I think this plate is a little warped. I'm gonna change the orientation and maybe we'll get lucky. Okay, a little pointer. Let's make sure these holes are right. Careful, these will strip in a second. I'm not using the right tool. I'm gonna to go get my impact. I got the impact. That gets you a good bite on these things. Okay, I'm gonna start her up and see what we got. Choke is on, bike is in neutral. take it for a test drive but I could tell everything went smooth if you have any questions please ask if you want to know where I sourced any of these parts out leave it in the comment and I will send you the link and if you could please subscribe thumbs up and leave a comment ride safe and have a great day